to the ESL Hearthstone Legendary Series Redemption Tournament Group C. That's or right. day number three. Whatever we're in the one. thick of things, man, but we're starting to get down to the wire for today. Two more matches to go. One, Silent Storm versus Cornico. The winner of that places Roger, or not player, plays Roger and places into the season two finals. Happening June 5th to 7th. Make sure you get your tickets if you haven't already. Me and TJ will be there. Uh, Raynad, Colento, Life Coach, Kabi, and Trump will be there. What a crazy lineup that is already. I think uh, the season finals can't fail based off yeah. that personality alone. We've got fun activities planned. We've got great Hearthstone games. And it's going to be promised to be a best atmosphere. It's a Milkcast Productions. <laughs> Milkcast, the guy who put on Challenge Stone. Yeah. And Lord of, uh, Lord of the Arenas, you know, WECs. Yeah. Deck Wars, all that stuff. He, he was, guarantees that it's going to be the best land you've ever seen. He was a pioneer in the world of Hearthstone production. So, If you like those tournaments in the past, he's the one in charge, so I think you guys would like it. Yeah. Uh, if not, then if you don't like Millcast Productions, then don't watch. And of course, along with Millcast, the people that let us put on these great land productions are, of course, our wonderful sponsors, Plantronics and Gigabyte. Plantronics headsets have been to space, if you guys... Have been watching the yeah, commercials. Yeah, it's, it's kind of actually funny how you know they have to advertise that so well, and it's not just a common fact that it's like, oh, did you know that when they land on the moon, they use Plantronic stuff? That's pretty sick. Yeah, it really is, and they started making a big stride towards gaming, mm -hmm. and uh, that's why they're they're helping us out a lot and yeah, letting us do out, all these fun things. <clears throat> turns out there's a lot more gamers in the world than astronauts at the moment. <laughs> Slightly. But, uh, no, I mean maybe in the future, in a hundred years, who knows? There's gonna be so many people traveling through space. Yeah. Maybe that is the case. That's what Elon Musk wants. Mm -hmm. And of course, make sure you And you're... they'll all be playing Hearthstone on, f on LTE. <laughs> on their phones in space. As they're traveling to their planet. Can you imagine? And their phones will have gigabyte motherboards. And their phones are really. <laughs> no, they, they probably won't. But yeah. Yeah. That's a really good segue, though. Awesome. Awesome. Also, make sure you're tweeting at us. Use the hashtag HLS. Follow us on Twitter at ESL Hearthstone or at Froden at right. AsmoCutie. Tweet at us. Let us know what you think. Yeah. Your ideas for dragon cards as well. See if you can top I, Dan's ideas. I think it's more realistic to expect that one day someone might be playing Hearthstone as a travel in space than it is to see the dragon designs that I that I suggested. Oh, I thought you were going to go in a different direction and say for dragon decks to be viable. Oh, wow. That's actually yeah. a pretty bold prediction there. There's actually a couple of dragon decks that are somewhat viable, so that'd mm. be... That would be a, a facile argument. But um, <clears throat> I, I want to talk and take an opportunity to recognize the cool uh, coolness of bringing Priest, Rogue, and a Paladin as a lineup in currently Conquest, and Silent Storm has that. Corneco has a more traditional lineup, but he's got Freeze Mage, and that's definitely the, the weird deck choice here uh, for Conquest. People have pretty much phased it out, considering that they have Druids, they have Control Warriors, and they might have, like, you know, the handlock that has Ragnaros that might be really good, or yeah. other decks that might have Ragnaros. Yeah. But this... I don't know how this is going to match up for Soundstorm. The first matchup that he had matched up pretty well. But this is going to be really tough for him to find wins. I think all it's going to be especially tough for him to find wins with Priest. What's he going to beat with his Priest deck? Uh, He can beat Druid. Priest can definitely beat a uh, Freeze Mage if it makes uh, it lines up well. That's probably the toughest one. It's it's probably tough. You think tougher than Handlock? Well, Freeze Mage can just literally just do whatever they want against Priest most of the time. Yeah, but he's got like Shadow or Pain, so Shadow or Pain can be good against the Doomsayer, so he doesn't yeah. get the, the combo off. Yeah. Um. And you know, if you get an early game circle of healing with uh, the Injured Blade Master, that damage just racks up over turns and. Yeah. You can't necessarily kill it off until you get Fireball and something else. Yeah, that's a good point. Well, first matchup is going to be Mage versus Paladin. Silent Storm, one of three players in the last two weeks of the Legendary Series, including the last two days of the Redemption Tournament, to bring Paladin. So GCT Turth was one to bring. Oh, Paladin, they meant Priest. Paladin, Paladin. It's been a couple more players that have. There's actually been more priests than paladins. Paladin there. was brought by Domdus. Domdus, and today, um, also was brought by uh, Azuzu. Oh, that's right. And that is it. But Azuzu got three yod on his druid, so he yeah. didn't get a chance to play it. Yeah, we didn't even get to see it. That's right. So in reality, we've only seen two paladins since 
week two of the Listener Series in two months. Right. We broadcasted like almost a hundred best of fives. No, not quite. Oh, I, I've certainly casted a hundred best of fives. I don't know what you were doing, DJ. Yeah, I'm getting close. Yeah, you're getting up there. You're at like 99 and a half. I was watching your best of fives and just envying you. Well, uh, Cornico immediately introduced with an interesting set of choices here of what he wants to do on turn three. Arcane Intellect guarantees the draws. Acolyte will almost certainly just gain you three life and draw one card. Mm -hmm. I think the because you have two Acolytes, it's okay plot to do this. But um, what more importantly is that it encourages the Knife Jugger to attack into this, and then you can ping it off. Yeah. So that's that's ultimately why I think this uh, this acolyte play is, is pretty good. So you can kill off the knife jugger without having to frost bolt it. The ping would have made for an awkward turn four if he didn't draw into a two drop, but this lines up quite nicely with the frost bolt. <coughs> yep, that's right. Frost bolt not the most uh, crucial card in everything because you have two and you only need one to activate the ice lances. Pilot Shredder comes down and that's just more pressure. Things are starting to snowball and there's an antique heal bot already prepared so that. Uh, when he has the Freeze Mage and everything else gathered up with the Alex Straza combos, he can heal back up to 23. Yeah. Paladins can have a good time in this matchup just because the early pressure that you mentioned, plus they can buy themselves like three additional turns later on in the game with cards like anti Killbot into Lotheb, into Lay on Hands. Like lots of ways to just prolong the game and allow them a few additional turns to try and take out the Freeze Mage before they can get enough burst to kill him. Hmm. A couple of ways to play this turn. You can fill out more mana wise, or you can play the Defender of Argus here. Defender of Argus is just stronger damage after you kill off this Acolyte. Oh, he actually lets his opponent maybe draw two cards that have won and goes for the pressure instead. I mean, it is powerful pressure. Keep in mind that this is the last turn before Flame Strike will always be threatening to wipe the board. And Paladin's not necessarily a class that plays too many minions that are uh, above mid-size range, right? Like, he's got maybe Sludge Belchers, Tyrion, yep. and Sylvanas. I guess the do? Quartermaster technically counts, but everything else is, like, live for Flame Strike to ruin it. There's some creatures that can be sort of annoying to remove, like Pilot and Shredder or mm -hmm. um, Shielded Minibot, but they're usually really vulnerable to those types of clears. Well, this is pretty unlucky for Corneco. He's got four of his secrets and no Mad Scientist. So now Mad Scientist is just a dead draw. Look at that little guy hiding behind Coroneco. What? <laughs> the is little... someone behind him? No, the little plushie. Oh. Oh, that thing. Oh, that's a little doll. I don't know. For some reason, I thought that was like an onion. Dan's <laughs> an onion. <laughs> he put a hat on an onion and put it behind him. I don't know, man. Did... <laughs> they like weird stuff over there sometimes. That's true. Like... I like the there's personification there, of There's like a lot of foods. weird trends in Asia that sometimes I just don't understand. Yeah. Like drawing faces on onions and putting hats on them. <laughs> I heard about that fad. Put this apple on your head. I hate you sometimes, <laughs> TJ. Goes for muster for battle. Doesn't even care. He just wants optimal damage. Three juggles to the base? Whoa! That's what? ridiculous! It's going to immediately shatter this ice barrier. Opponent was working at effectively 20 HP prior to that activation. Now he's got an opportunity to actually deny his Acolyte from drawing two cards. His opponent's at 8, so Is he? he would make him overdraw by 1. Uh, I think that's why he didn't really care too much about denying the draw. Right. Because either fact, way, he's he out like a it, Yeah, in yeah. that case, he actually wanted it, so he didn't lose. Yeah. Flame Strike comes into the hand. But what will he burn? Pyroblast. Uh, not the end of the world. Not the end of the world because he only has one heal bot. Have to imagine this is a flame strike play. And it would be doubled up if his opponent had a Doomsayer come oh. out of it. Well, explosive Sheep is. That's really good. Very useful. Because you can't really play anything. Uh, you, I mean, you can. Well, y yeah, but. Play Sylvanas and just attack. It's only one damage. Right. He shouldn't actually play, like, he shouldn't do anything that involves hero powering because it's just going to die to the explosive sheep. 
This might be an opportunity for you to play Emperor Thorson now. The Emperor Thorson, uh, though, you can't block. You can Emperor Thorson Ice Lance. But are you really afraid of dying? I guess you could die to Consecration and True Silver because it's eight mana. Yeah. You just died it. No, you wouldn't, because you'd ping mm. off the. Explosion. Yeah, you ping off the, the explosive sheet. Yeah. So you you were just afraid of True Silver, but I forgot he'd be at eight mana, so it's yeah. true. Unless you wanted to Sylvan uh, Ice Lance Sylvanas, that's also okay. I wouldn't mind doing that. Mm -hmm. There it is. I like it. Then you sort of can cash in next turn on yeah. the explosive sheep. You don't yeah. have to ping it off now. You can sort of allow. Well, actually, Sons this allows you two turns in a row to get Thor's in because you can Frost Nova the following turn. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> this, of course, really stinks for uh, Storm. He just has Dr. Boom, but Dr. Boom's going to get frozen. And he's going to get more value off of the Thorson. It almost doesn't even matter anymore that Mad Scientist comes in hand because Seekers will cost one mana. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's clever. I like it. Gets the kill on the Thorson. Oh, look at that. So it should end up being okay. Yeah. Pretty funny how that happened. His Boombots were pretty underwhelming, though. I think he wanted some face damage with those little little guys. Yeah. If you, I mean, that's true, but even if you got some face damage in, unless it did like eight to the face, it's still like the same. Yeah. He's gonna stall out the board. I like personally keeping Sylvanas alive in case you get Doomsayer. You can just ping it. Yeah. Ooh, Ooh that's a pretty big draw though. Tyrion yeah, that, that's a huge draw. Yeah, Tyrion's going to be really powerful because it, it's just like so many ways you can't let it live, you can't let it die. You have to just freeze it continually. Mm. If it dies, it just gives you the weapon, the Ashbringer, which puts you on a really hard clock of two turns. And then the uh, the Tyrion, of course, is a lot of damage. He does have that other Ice Barrier up, though, so he's effectively working at 17 health. Every time, <clears throat> every time Tyrion is drawn, like the jingle... That plays when Tyrion is played. Uh -huh. Plays in my mind for like five hours. That! Every time it's played, it plays in my ear for two seconds. I hate you sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. That's, that's that's pretty convenient. Now you can play that, ping the Savannah's let it get stolen, and then you can save your Frost Nova and instead develop Ice Block. <clears throat> How much damage do you have in the hand? You've got Fireball, Frostbolt Ice Lands. That's only 13 damage. So you can't start burning. I guess that's where burning Power Blast is relevant, because if you had yep. Power Blast, you'd have 23 damage. There's actually usually a lot of health that you have to get with Paladins. Because normally they have... Oh, True Silver is also 4 heal of Yeah. Boost. So you have double True Silver, Antique Heal Bot, and uh, Lay on lay hands. hands. So that's 20 points of healing that you got to get through. To right. That's a lot. Do. You basically have to do 50 damage really hard with Pyroblast, without Pyroblast, unless you get lots of value out of Archimage and Tinnitus. Mm -hmm. Which is still definitely a possibility. The game is young. Oh. Oh, he's gonna, he's gonna get greedy. Does he play, so he just holds on to it? Yeah. Okay. There's a chance that maybe he plays like True uh, Silver. So he's, sell he's selling that he doesn't have Doomsayer. This is very next level. So he's saying like, okay, I don't have Doomsayer. I'm screwed. Uh-oh. Yeah. And then he's going to fill up the board a little bit more. But of course, if Silent Storm is kind of a doom with this, at best he plays Shielded Minibob, but nothing else. Yeah. Corny Second Doomsayer. Yeah. cornico has got a good poker face. So now he plays... Frost Nova number two and Doomsayer, right? Yeah. Or maybe, okay, right. Yeah. Uh, and then the whole point is his opponent might have a silence to deal with it. And then he still kills it. Quartermaster doesn't help, so I guess he just hero powers just for the fun of it. He could also just pass. Yeah. There's no way to influence it otherwise. Now you get the Ashbringer, and now your opponent has to stop you from attacking all the time to the face. Arkin selects pretty good. Now you can drop Doomsayer again. 
the Antonitis. Interesting. Antonitis. That's going to be really useful in the following turns. Yeah, I mean, next turn, he could... Okay. Oh, I forgot about the zero mana yeah. Iceland. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. It's good. I was going to say this is weak to equality, but now it's not. Mm -hmm. You'd have to have a quality and consecrate to take this out. Ooh, double quartermaster. That's unusual, considering that one quartermaster usually gets a job done. It could be so many things that everyone's expecting only one quartermaster usually, that the second is like you know, not as high of a yeah of a factor. This is brutal. Right. Letting Archimedes and Tinnitus go unchecked. Right. I mean, yeah, you're reducing his attack to one, but... I mean, he's still got spells oh, in his hand that are reduced. That's a big draw. Flame Strike to clear the board, and he's got two more fireballs. I mean, Antonius isn't doing five damage, but that's still really strong. Aha! Aha! Aha. <laughs> Why does he laugh so much when he takes fireballs? Uh, I don't know. I guess he's just a cheery guy. Uh, Silent Storm's just kind of dead. There's just too much burn. You can't kill him fast enough. Yeah. He can even fit in fireballs with an ice block. That's usually one of the most awkward things where, like, you only can fireball once, ice block, and hero power, but he can fireball twice now. He's a Thorson. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's 24 damage points of burn plus whatever's coming next turn. Um, yeah. Silent Storm had a good push in yeah. the mid game there. <laughs> There's a lot of fireballs coming their way. And there's even a zombie show. Yeah. This paladin lived a good life. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Corneco went for the aggressive play on the Antonitis what just in do? case his opponent what didn't have a response do? to it, and his call was right. Well, I mean, let's take a look here. Did you just start fireballing minions? That's actually a good question. Because even if you go, f you do what, 13 damage to face here, develop ice block. Oh, yeah, you have th exactly 13 damage next right. turn. Um, even with just fireball, fireball ping. Uh -huh. Put him on having heals, but... Doomsayer is sort of going to secure... He's got so many turns where it's like the fireballs are back-to-back. -back. Uh, that's five, nine... Uh, 14, 16, which happens to be... The ice block pop, but then the, then the doom, um, then the zombie chow dies. The zombie chow restores your opponent to five mm. health, or five five health, so he goes up to six. You can't kill from the hand. This is really complicated. You might have to kill the doomsayer. But then you, if you don't do it, you don't pop the ice block. Then how do you expect to win? It's quite the conundrum. Yep. Yeah, he pops it so that zombie chow doesn't end up becoming alive. Mm -hmm. Of course, he knows his opponent has insane amounts of burst, so his hope is to uh, draw Lotheb draw in, Lotheb. into lay on hands. <laughs> Orc is on Mystic. Yeah. Ah. Uh, but that's unlikely that he even runs it. Right. I mean, right now, he could even just... Well, Fireball and Blizzard. No, nah, it's not really that... Um, I mean, he can get away with it because he's just so far ahead. Yeah. Just way too much damage. It even has the one health. Whoa. Ah, that was his direct damage. If he went for the face, I think Steinstorm's really unhappy. He he ended up just sacrificing some of his damage because he really needed to try and get his opponent down to uh, ice block pop range. Well, there's still an opportunity, but it no, I don't know. Let's see, if he puts him down to two this turn... Even if he draws Lay on Hands, there's still two fireballs remaining. He's right. dead. If he draws Loath, that one fireball is still able to be played. He's dead. There's too many fireballs. It's crazy. Yep. That argument against Tinnitus, not having the answer to that. He would have that. to Lay on Hands into Holy Light in order to survive. Yeah. So I think he knows what's, what time it is. Uh, and unfortunately for Silent Storm, even if I think he got he predicted that he'd draw Consecration direct damage from the hand, there's no guarantee that uh, he'd be able to you know, figure it out. Now, Freeze Mage, on the other hand, has been gotten rid of. It's one of the tougher decks we probably had to deal with. Yeah. Oh, whoa! That 
Could that's actually, actually a scary closer. moment. We <laughs> yeah. didn't pay attention to how many cards yeah. were taken, but if if he was like decked out, if he played Cold Light Oracle, that uh, actually that's really unlikely. But imagine if he got something equivalent to make his opponent draw a little bit. That that yeah. would have been really funny to see him die just fatigue. Yeah, only one card remaining. That's a pretty big deal. Uh, but he's gonna, like you said, take out that win with uh, Freeze Mage, Silent Storm. He's still not in the worst of spots. I mean, the rest of his decks line up okay. I think uh, Freeze Mage would have probably been the tougher one. Paladin can can overcome Handlock uh, right. because of equality and just because of early pressure. Um, Rogue might not do so well either. Against Druid, yeah, but he wants to match up. He wants to like match up the Rogue against Druid, and he wants to match up the Paladin, Paladin against the Warlock. Uh, Paladin against Druid is okay too. Yeah, but he doesn't want to match up. Priest like, against Warlock. Yeah. Priest against Warlock's a tough one. Mm -hmm. Actually, yeah. He needs... If I'm Korineko, I play Warlock all the way through. And then... Um... Actually, hold on. This is really complicated. Is there a way that you can guarantee, like, make sure the last game is a favorable one? Because if you win with the Warlock, then your opponent just tries to beat Druid every single time. If you throw out Druid here and beat the Paladin with Druid... Gotcha. Then that's like a guaranteed win. That's the best. And there you go. Yeah. Um, that's if, pretty smart from Corneka then. Yeah. If you're Silent Storm, you have to sort of predict that. But, I mean, it, it's really hard because it's like all mind games. Then you, you go to the point where Corneka could predict that Silent Storm is going to predict predict that he's going to pick Druid. And then right. so at a certain else. point, if you go deep enough to the mind games, it doesn't really matter too much. Yeah. It just comes down to you got to win with all three of your decks anyway. So... Right. He might as well just roll a dice and throw it out. But yeah, this is this could be an opportunity for Corneko to run away with this. If he finds a win with this Druid against Paladin, then it opens up his Warlock to just have to find one win against either Priest or Rogue, which are both favorable matchups for that deck. So this is sort of a... I mean, every game at this point is a must-win, but there's a, the pressure's on for Silent Storm to take a win with Paladin in this matchup. Pressure All right, well, the Druid versus the Paladin is... Yeah, you know, like it's a matchup that we've seen quite sometimes in the past. Uh, generally speaking, if you don't have a good opening hand, though, as a Druid player, which Corneko looks like, <laughs> he... it's okay if well, he draws into big things. Yeah, he just needs to draw into Ancient of Lore, and this hand becomes amazing. Yeah, if he doesn't and just picks up Savage Roar, Force of Nature, that I mean, is okay because yeah. it can allow him to cycle or deal with the early creatures to give him more time to draw into big stuff. Silent Storm only has a pass, no shielded mini bot. No, I mean, it's a situational card. Their swipe is not necessarily a minion that he wants to put out. And there it is for next turn. So his hand's shaping up okay. He's got to find uses for those innervates, though. I mean, I True. guess as the game goes on, he's going to regardless. But getting out to a really yes. uh, quick start is pretty important. Yeah, Silent Storm getting double shredder plays is. Uh, going to dominate the board for a little bit of time here. Double Shredder into Ooh, True Silver Champion. Innervate Dr. Boom. Yes. But there is a big game hunter winning on the other side, so it's not as big as a gain as you might think it would be. Especially if a Boom Bot just hits face for like one damage. I've got East in my side. <laughs> oh, he's just going to ignore it. Yeah. Okay. You'd let the Druid dictate the pace, like attack into the big game hunter twice? Mm hmm. Well, turn six is that that turn for druids that's usually quite awkward. So, like, what else is he gonna do? I mean, you, like, the way you win is by pressuring really hard, like yeah, not by trading true. four damage into one one boom bot. Ooh, that's really bad. I think he yeah. would have sequenced it the other way. Where yeah, get the damage onto the pilot a little bit more. <clears throat> and all of a sudden, one consecration could rock Koroneko's world. Mm -hmm. And he's at the mercy of drawing. Oh, ho, ho. He's at the mercy of drawing Ancient of Lore. Off the top. You can't pass this up. <laughs> this is straight up nope. just like domination on the board. He just used two interface to gain all this tempo for nothing. He's got two cards left. Oh my goodness. What's with him and the explosive sheeps? Imagine well, if that was an funny explosive is, whelp. He probably is going to want to hero power this down. And he doesn't want to use Keeper of the Grove, so he's just going to pass. And he gets full initiative. All right. Well, I think Sylvanas seems pretty reasonable. 
Yeah, Sylvanas is pretty great. Shredder and Hero Power is like equivalent power, but Sylvanas is just like... And this ruins the really rag play! It's gonna bait out the, uh, the Keeper. Oh, there's a Spectre Knight that you were mentioning. I said, I've seen a lot of players over the past past mm. couple days playing with the Spectral Knights. And Spectral Knight against Paladin is actually one of the least impactful uh, classes that it can have against because it does have a way to deal with it through the Peacekeeper. Yeah, but it destroys warriors. It's true. I know firsthand. And Rogue, which is important. Yeah. Because Sonstorm has that Rogue. Yeah. It's also a very cool golden card. It's pretty sweet, I gotta admit. The way it keeps fading in and at, out like a ghost. Because mm -hmm. it's a spectral knight. Whoa. Yeah. I hadn't even noticed that before you pointed that out. All right, well, here's the next level to it. Ragnaros' background is because he's the Fire Lord. What? You're telling me yeah. the orange and red glow coming off of his body. That's right. It's because it's fire Because he's not in a Fanta lava? commercial. Wow. Because he's the Fire Lord. It's not a card that Kel from Keenan and Kel designed. It actually is fire and lava. Yeah. That's why also there's leaves in the back. I could do this all day. <laughs> this is what they're they're actually paying me just to tell you this. <laughs> Nothing <else>. awesome. <laughs> I I really need it and appreciate it. So I'm glad that you're around for that. With Keeper of the Grove used, that also means an opportunity. For Tyrion to have high impact value, Ragnaros is going to be not impactful whatsoever. Your opponent drops Rag, you Peacekeeper it, and you choose over, choose over it down. Mm -hmm. No matter what Rag hits, it's going down. It's, it's just you really hope it hits Sylvanas just for the highest value. Ooh, well, okay, second best. Sure. Not too bad. Peacekeeper, choose silver, and then shut it down with Sylvanas that end up surviving here. And now this is basically where Paladin starts running away with the game. It's got such a commanding uh, control of the board. <laughs> Doesn't even have to use choose silver. Forgot about the quartermaster, just got drawn. And uh, built up his board even better. He avoids yeah. Harrison. It fills out the mana curve. Excellent play here from Sons. And boards like this are hard, really hard to deal with for Druids. Like sure. lots of just like medium-sized creatures that really pose a threat because they have single-target stuff like Wrath and they have um, like small-scale AOE with Swipe. Right. But Swipe against like lots of things with three health, it's evident Patron Warrior as well, just really difficult mm -hmm. to remove. Savannah's is not even that impactful on the board. Your opponent can just play... Just like a, a hero power and then trade Sylvanas. And, and then, then kill whatever it is. Kill whatever comes out champion. like almost immediately. Yeah. And like even in the worst case scenario, which is the sil the the uh Quartermaster. Quartermaster getting stolen. I was gonna call him the Silver Master. I have no time he ends up games. getting uh, destroyed by the true silver. I was really amused by that one post on Reddit that was saying the quartermaster was like a guy that gave people arms. Did you read that? It was literally like an entire story. Like oh, a, yeah? I, I, don't, I wouldn't call it fan fiction, but maybe even <laughs> I would go so far. I would call it fan fiction. It wasn't erotic enough to be fan fiction, but it was like the Quartermaster was just giving... Silverhand recruits basically have one arm. And what the Quartermaster does is he gives the, the Silverhand recruits a second arm. And that's why he says two arms, man. There was a lot I have a strong feeling that if I go and find this post on Reddit, it's the count posted will be a Zumo cutie. I'm just advertising myself. You're like, yeah, that was a really good story, man. I did. I thought it. Was, I said it was interesting, and I can see why. It was amusing. Written, produced, directed, a screenplay <laughs> by T.J. Sanders, the Quartermaster. Written by T.J. Scar. <laughs> Well, he's got two Super Silver Champions to control the state of the board uh, until forever. Like, Silent Storm's actually at that point where he could literally cl close his eyes, play any card, and just run over the Druid. There's just no way for him to uh, seize back control. Mm -hmm. uh, there's just too many threats, and even if he eliminated Tyrion somehow, which is the pressing threat, there's that Ashbringer to follow it up. Paladin has dominated the Druid this game. And it's a lot we were talking about at the beginning, TJ, about the early game start. 
Kornenko had wild growth and two innervates, and a lot of people probably will be typing GG immediately because they assume the game's over. Yeah. Drew has that wild growth curve. But uh, he didn't hit into a lot of important cards after that. Yeah. That's why it's one of those things where it's like, do you keep both innervates if you have that and your wild growth as an opening hit? You probably toss one back. I think it's sort of like a one of the other thing as well. It's like you either have an innervate start or a wild growth start that's strong. Or, like, a wild growth and start that you innervate into an Ancient of War. Because yeah. his problem was he ran out of cards. Yeah. Because if three of your first five cards are cards that, yeah. um, like, aren't bodies, unless you draw into Ancient of Lore really early, then you're basically going to be in a position that we just saw uh, Kornico be in. So he's going to tie up the series. Uh, Silent Storm is going to tie up the series. And that was, I, th I want to say, must win. Just because if he had lost, it would have been really tough for him to win the series yeah, at all. Yeah, he can't let the Druid escape. He basically no. has to use the Druid as a target for him to, to defeat. Yeah. And it ends up being okay because Roger also has a Druid. And if he's truly targeting the Druid every single time, then he's got uh, the Druids to, to defeat all the, way, all the way through. Yeah. Yeah. Which would be, I would say, extremely fortuitous that he hit three out of the, the seven players that happened to bring Druid. Or four. There's actually There's four, four yeah. There's actually, okay. most players today brought Druid. So. Yeah, it's true. The majority did. That's a really good read by Silent Storm then. Forgot about uh, Zuzu that also brought Druid. Yeah, so what happens is they they know their group, but they don't know their bracket. So they don't know their first opponent or their potential second opponents sure. until after they submit deck lists. So they can look at a broad spectrum of their group and think, well, mm -hmm. what are most of these players likely to bring? And then can I target that? Yeah, and Soundstorm said, well, maybe all these players are going to bring Druid, and that would be a good read if that was true. And so I'm going to bring three decks that sort of target that. But out. why not bring like a Warlock instead of the Priest? Because that's really good against Druid. Because his name is Silent Storm. That's true. He is, the, he is quite the hipster. The arch nemesis to Spider Raj. <laughs> that, is, that is the worst fan fiction you've written yet. It hasn't even been written yet. <laughs> It does sound like Don't some kind of awful cover. knockoff clash of like the Marvel's Avengers or something like that. After the cast today, when I, when I go back and instead of doing prep work for tomorrow, I'm going to write the fan fiction for Spider Raj versus Silent Storm. And uh, okay. I'm going to post it on Reddit and Twitter and everywhere. And if it gains traction, must then I might never see face. you again. You might actually make it big from that point on, TJ. You yeah. become this big, best-selling author. Blizzard might hire me for their lore team. <laughs> I would pay to see that happen. Okay. Well, we should be jumping into the next match we should here momentarily. Be. Yeah, we could. Um, Roger uh, will be waiting the, the winner of this, but he has that Druid Warlock Hunter, or sorry, Warlock Warrior lineup. Hunter seems to be phased out for today. Uh, we have two players who only brought the Hunters, and one of them didn't even oh. play it. That's a weird choice, especially considering um, I think players have said that Hunter is getting stronger if, instead of weaker. Stronger? Interesting. Yeah. Well, you're, the pl you're one of the guys that said it. I didn't say it gets stronger. I, say, I think it's a good deck. Yeah. Well, the, the hybrid Hunter, the hybrid face Hunter, mid range Hunter that we saw have lots of success I, success. I personally yesterday. like it just because of the way the metagame shifted where you need to play faster than Patron Warrior, mm -hmm. like in that Hybrid Hunter does. But uh, it gives you the opportunity to still scale enough so that way you just don't get shut down by like Warrior or Druid because yeah. the high mains are in there. Yeah. So it's it's pretty cool. Um, I like the Freezing Trap too because it's such a good mind game. You throw the Leper Gnomes and the Abusive Sergeants and the Wolf Rider and all of a sudden Freezing Trap's there and you're just like, what? So it's, it's good stuff. Uh, personally, I... I have a really good win, 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 win rate with it, but that's just because it works well on ladder doesn't always mean that it's the ideal deck in a Conquest format. Yeah, uh, especially single similar, elimination. Though. But it's pretty similar, though. Like, generally speaking, you know, bringing, going to Conquest, bringing good ladder decks, that's always uh, an uh, acceptable lineup. I think players could have been rewarded today by bringing Hunter. And I say that because the two players that brought Hunter, we didn't even get to see it. Azuzu got 0-3'd. And Luffy got 3-1. Well, so. it's going to be Rogue versus the Handlock. This is a tough matchup, generally speaking. Mm -hmm. But not undoable. Not undoable at all. I find it similar to... And I've made this comparison a few times throughout today in different matchups. I find it similar to Grim Patient Ward. Uh, the matchup. 
No, that's not like a joke or a nod to me I know it's not comparing. a joke, TJ. That's why it's even funnier to me. You looked up and you raised your eyebrows at me like it was the funniest joke you've ever heard in your entire life. No, yes, but it is. Because when I, when I find something hilarious, I raise my eyebrows. <laughs> yes. Slightly. And then give a suggestive look. But uh, the reason why it's... Um, it's the same as Grim Page Warriors because a lot of times, uh, think of like the frothing berserkers as like the oil. You have to find a way, a way to get around that and connect. You're raising your eyebrows again, <laughs> and it's just distracting me. Oh man. Well, I don't have very thick and noticeable eyebrows, so I have to be very emotive with it in order for it to get to my point across. So you're just practicing. Or you have a point that you're really trying to get across. But no. I think uh, Silent Storm is in big trouble right now. Yep. In very big trouble. His opponent's about to curve out. And he's going to be hit with the 3, 4, 5, double Drake into Mountain Giant. All those two saps. Hold on. Two saps might be able to lever something. But yeah, go ahead, DJ. Continue explaining. Well, I was saying, the, think of the Froth and Berserkers like the oil. You have to find a way to connect that damage to the face. And it's so hard because you have limited amounts of removal. The sap is basically like the execute for the Grim Patient Warrior. And you have other tools that can win you the game, but they're so ineffective. Like Violet Teacher and 1-1 one -one Tokens are similar to like Grim Patrons and Warsong Commanders. Like you can throw as much as you want into the big walls, but until you can get through and connect with the bigger things, like Big Frothing Berserkers, or in this case, like a Tinker Sharp Soda Oil weapon, then you're not gonna win. And that's why I think it's similar. 10 minutes later, the point comes out. Gotcha. Oh, that's interesting. Um, especially considering that uh, this might end up being the case here. Cornico taps the Mountain Giants. He's not expecting a second sap because it's highly unlikely. That might be the punishing point. Ooh. Oh. Thorson. He only has one charge on his dagger, though. Right. And Tinker Sharp Sword Oil is really hard to use with Violet Teacher on the board, though. It's like a one and four that. You just get screwed if it goes on to the newly spawned apprentice. Emperor Thorson makes things cheaper. Next turn, you can weapon up, sap. Mm -hmm. Yeah, actually, you can do that next turn because it becomes cheaper. You can sap uh, oil next turn while weaponing up. I don't think the Violet Teacher is a very good teacher. Why do you say that? She gathers a bunch. They are of, the foundation of our nation. She gathers a bunch of students, okay, a bunch of students around her, and she yells at them and says, "Whenever I cast a spell, grab a stick, and go attack something." That's what it is. They have a stick. They're only one ones. The real life implications. Sounds like you should write a fan fiction about it. <laughs> I'll just include it. The Violet teachers actually fight for. Are silence sticks around. an emotional trigger for you, TJ? <laughs> <laughs> you, you caught me. <laughs> I've been had. Yeah. Oh. Uh oh. Hold on. Is that lethal? Sap is. Uh, let's see. Sap. Oil. It's uh, four, six, seven mana. It is. Four damage. Plus five. That's nine. Yeah. But it ha the oil has to go. Oh, it has to land. It has to land on one the, the one ones. Whoa. Or three five. I'm ready to oh boy. Do. No, it's a two out of five chance where it lands on something that's not a minion that can attack this turn. I'm ready to Whoa. Whoa! Here we go. And that's it. Wait, that was a mistake. What? He should have oiled before he sapped. No, because then how does he combo? Learn. He needs a combo. Oh, okay. Yeah, I see. I see. I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, wow. It's one of those things where it's always so scary because they create two more tokens there. Silent Storm kills the the handlock. I can't emphasize how big of a deal that is. Because yeah. now he gets two chances with Priest. Before, he, only, he might only have one chance with Priest. Uh, and realistically speaking, it's probably going to come to game five. Because I think uh, Korneko is just going to queue up handlock again against Priest. Yeah. And then uh, Silent Storm might barely lose or something like that. And then he plays Priest against Druid. The double sap was a really big deal. Yeah, it's one of those things where you always rather just have a minion sometimes, and then it's like you realize this is actually the exact cards I can use to start pressuring for lethal. Mm -hmm. And it's because it's un unusual that it sometimes works. Mm -hmm. You don't usually have two saps in the opening hand. You don't keep sap, so how do you expect him to draw two saps? Yeah. 
And if he has those two saps that end up doing it, it's like you catch your opponent off guard because he gets a little bit lazy. That tap into Mountain Giant when he had two Sludge Belchers that could have been played back-to-back -to, -back to complicate the Violet Teacher math, that ends up being the, all the difference in the world. Yeah. And because Corneco got greedy in that in, in respect, which you can't really blame him for, he ends up getting punished and loses a game that he should have won. Yeah, and now uh, he's got Druid and Warlock remaining. Those are the Druid first. Yeah, Druid first. I guess because he has to win with it anyways. Change of pace, change of scene. It could be one of those things where, like, if he wins this match, he'll go into game five feeling like he's won the series. Yeah. Because handlock is that difficult. Especially one with Mountain Giants in. And especially a priest that doesn't have a light bomb. Right. And Sirenstorm also knows what kind of warlock it is, so he can't get the advantage of, like, oh, he tossed away Shadow or Death because mm -hmm. he thought it was Zoo. Yeah. Do it. All right, well, Soundstorm's going to have two opportunities to find a win with this Priest. Soundstorm wants to defend his title of Legendary Series Champion. He won Season 1. Will he even make it to Season 2? We're going to find out. He's already off to a bad start. Not having the coin as a Priest is a pretty big deal, just because you need that extra card. Uh, priest, is priest thrives off of making decisions with more cards. Mm -hmm. Um... You know, decks like Hunter, sometimes you do just need to curve out. You don't need that many cards, but Priest is definitely a class in the opposite spectrum. Yeah. The more cards you have, the better you can line up the removal accordingly. Oh, I forgot about Spectral Knight. Spectral Knight is also a really problematic card for Priest. It's... That's really true, actually. Although, How do they... Cabal Shadow Priest. Cabal Shadow Priest. And, and uh, Shrinkmeister. Yeah. That's about the only way you can deal with it. Mm-hmm. It doesn't even get caught up in like any sort of combos because you can't even Alkanai Soul Priest and ping it off. Interesting. Would you power shield again? Mm. Doesn't really matter. I mean, the whole it's not that you want to get the extra health, but you want to just get the, the the card cycle through. I think maybe he wants to be able to defend against like a shade. Yeah. Because if he keeps two spells in his hand, he can just kill off a shade that spawned. He really wants to get the Spectre Knight out as soon as possible. That second Wild Growth, by the way, might just be dead for a, a long time. Yeah. Three or four cards. Even though everyone tends to usually immediately assume two Wild Growths. Oh, that's amazing. Usually a second one's a little bit awkward. Druid of the Claw Charge. Interesting. Okay, so he t t does this because he assumes Priest can't easily deal with it. Mm -hmm. He's half right. And what this does is it paves a way for Spectre Knight to be really effective. This is like a pass. Wow. Yeah, it ends up being the exact right call. This is really bad. Remember, Silent Storm really needs to win this match. She can't afford to, to let it go to game five. Mm -hmm. But he can uh, Holy Nova now and then set up for a much better Akunai play the next turn. Yeah. Ooh. Okay. This sort of fits the same sure. line, but yeah, I guess since he's spawning the right, light but warden. Then how does he deal with the Spectre Knight if his opponent has removal? Like, this is Keeper of the Grove, right? Keeper of the Grove plus Hero Power down. It's It feels a little bit greedy, unfortunately. Kornick playing the Pilot Shredder d does tend to ignore it, though. And he plays a second Wild Growth because he wants to start putting on pressure. He doesn't assume his opponent can deal with it. Well, he knows that the Light Warden is not going to get buffed. So that's going to be a 1 2 regardless. But he couldn't. He, but he's wrong uh, in this sense. Like, he makes the read that his opponent doesn't have a way to deal with Spectre Knight, but he does have the circle of feeling. So both players both <laughs> basically s assume that the other player can't deal with the board. And in the end, Silent Storm is the one who comes out okay from it because he needs to be the one to clear the board here. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and he can even fit in some other spells. Yeah. Light of the Naru, number two. In the light. And he should be able to shoot down whatever comes out. <laughs> or not. That's really awkward again because if that gets silenced by the Keeper of the Grove, it's another four attack minion. This is one of the strangest. I haven't seen a board like this in a long time. Because it's right. been a while before th since we've seen Spectral Knights and Druid. It's also been a while since we've seen mm -hmm. 
like classic wild pyro organized circle type control priest right in competitive as well he he's probably gonna have to hero power down like this uh this ancient watcher right so that way just in case he comes alive yeah it's not as threatening mm -hmm. <clears throat> sludge belch here mm. Seems like a really easy way to just like start capitalizing on swipe somehow here, but it seems a little awkward. Swipe I'd be really scared to play Shade of Nax Ramus and Sludge Belcher because of uh, possible clears with and then like Shadow Madness. Yeah. There's you keep. It's not really a clean way to deal with swipe or to use swipe because I mean, even if you use mm -hmm. Keeper plus swipe, like how do you do anything? The seven health right. is problematic. The um. So what Silent Storm is doing, he's, he's pushing these Light Wardens with um, the Akunai, because it's like, you have to kill Akunai first, but if you don't kill the Light Wardens, then the Akunai is going to deal more damage to the board. If you kill the Akunai, then the Light Wardens become live, mm -hmm. and they can start gaining insane power through the Holy Novas. What? So this is where the choice is. He probably has to end up swiping and then using Keeper. Silencing. Oh. Is he going to hit one of these Light Wardens instead? I think he really wanted to silence the the Akunai first, so that way he can remove the health buff yeah. and then kill off the Akunai. Uh oh. Oh man, Corneko, I think realized he made a little bit of an awkward sequencing, and he needs to actually Whoa. move fast. Now the Soul Priest lives, and he can actually just use Circle of Healing here, throw the Light Wardens in, and clear off the whole board. You're right. That and then play like, Sludge Belcher. That seemed like a really weak turn. Yeah, this was this ended up backfiring a lot because Corneco didn't sequence the way he I think he originally planned to do it. Wow. Okay, so now that Silent Storm's gonna play Sludge Belcher and control the board here, he's gonna have uh, eight power that's live, and he can answer anything that comes out. Doctor Boom with a Shadow Word Death. And his opponent doesn't necessarily have the Savage Order to finish off the game either, so this is a pretty decent spot for Silent Storm. I think he just has to evaluate if um, it's worth it. It's worth it, because he does end up putting his keeper, uh, his Arcanite to, to two health here. He's been pretty conservative with his Circle of Healing, and that might be one of the reasons why Cornico went for a play like this. Mm -hmm. it, it seemed like he had other plans, and then he kind of panicked at the end and just threw out the, mm. the right. shade because he didn't know what else to do. But he might have been putting Silent Storm on not having Circle of Healing. Oh, oh, is he going to Holy Nova instead? This wow. Is really creative stuff. These are going to be huge. Wait, how much damage is this? Is this? This is not lethal, is it? Oh. It is. Those are going to be 11. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, 22. What the? Oh, my God. That is the sign of an amazing player. When you can spot lethal, when whoa, <laughs> I wanna. That is nuts. Oh, he did man. this to us that in one of the in legendary the the see the week that he actually qualified, or one of the weeks that he helped him qualify. He did that to us as well. He spotted lethal when Dan's not even in the shot right now. My neck is in permanent shock. Yeah, Dan's eyebrows are just I'm gonna going go, nuts. I'm, I'm dialing a chiro chiropractor right now to mm -hmm. fix my back because I, I just stuck my head, whoa, mm -hmm. way back. That was crazy. Wow. That's I was wondering, you look at his webcam and he's like counting, he's like. Yeah, 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 yeah. Cause, uh, I was like, Circle of Healing does four damage with Ogonai on the board. Because it just felt like clear, because you, know, you can clear off the board, you can control yeah. it with Sludge Belcher, he thought about killing off his own Akunai to heal. And I know a lot of people might be focusing on the fact that we missed Lethal, but the fact is, that was really impressive play. I'm not even upset at myself for missing that Lethal. Usually I'm, I'm not, pretty upset. Man, it made it much more exciting. Yeah. Wow. Silent Storm is an amazing player, and he's doing it with decks that we don't come to expect, with plays that are very creative and way more advanced because he knows that he has two he forms of heal, and if his opponent can keep a minion on board, uh, then he's able to go for those lethals. Really yeah. funny point that that Ancient Watcher ended up being so passive yeah. that it ended up being plus four damage per 
light wound. So that was eight, eight damage. damage caused by an ancient watcher yeah. off the drop of a pilot shredder. And you don't tell me that's not impressive. Such, tell me Hearthstone's all RNG. Jeez. Such heads up play. Ridiculous. Yeah. But Silent Storm's going to move on to the finals to face Spider Raj. So let's take a look at the brackets. Spider Raj. <laughs> let's take a look at the brackets uh, before we jump into that. <sighs> all right. Uh, to see where we've, we've been throughout the day. So. Uh, the semifinals, we saw Luigi's fall to Spider Roger, 3-1, uh, to one, and that really exciting matchup. Impressive stuff from Silent Storm, taking out Coronico in 3-1. to one. So the final is set. We are one match away from determining one more player who's going to be joining us at the Season 2 Legendary Series Land Final. Silent Storm is going to try and make a return, and Roger wants to try and prove himself, make a, make a trip to NA. <clears throat> I think if Coronico made the right play by um, playing the, the Keeper Silence and attacking in, he actually would have like even guaranteed himself further kill because uh, yeah. more damage onto the board. The, the yeah. Shade would have survived. Mm. So I, I just wanted to point that out there because it looks like Cornaco's mistake didn't end up making uh, any difference. And he's looking in good stride. He seems to be a good sport. I think Hearthletics is a very promising team, and I think uh, I can't wait to see how everyone else is going to do with its bolt and everyone else there in jab. So yeah. uh, congratulations to... Spider Roger, and for Silent Storm for getting this far, we're going to take a break, TJ, I believe, right? Yeah, we're going to go to a quick break, but when we return, the conclusion of Group C of the Redemption Tournament, where we will invite one more player to join us for that $25,000 land final in June. The final, right after this break.